Kim? All right. So we are live on Facebook right now. People will be joining us as we get rolling on this. And we're adding more people as we go. we got so many people coming in. This is great uh, who are joining us today. And we're so excited to have curators here. Um, I'm happy to just ha have finally some, well, it's so hot here, but it was actually a little bit cooler today in the Woodland Hills area, which I'm very grateful for, uh, but still very warm. And we finally get to have for the first time, which feels like forever, uh, like a first Thursday, an art walk, if you will. I know that a lot of places have had virtual art walks, but we finally get to kind of have um, one that's going to be a hybrid with the uh, uh, blank canvas, which I'm very excited about. And uh, um, so in just a few minutes, we'll allow a few more people to roll in here and uh, then we'll get going. Thank you if you're joining us here live on Facebook. I'm Dustin Kleeman with Momentum. We're so grateful to have you tonight. We're going to be talking about art. So if you could maybe grab your favorite drink, maybe some cheese too. So if you're pairing it with wine, that would be great. I know that uh, everyone here kind of has their uh, choices if they will. So that's good as well. Um, I think we have all our curators here. We're waiting for one more. Is Gretchen around by chance? Does anyone know where Gretchen is? Yeah, I'm, I'm, I think I'm going to be handling the, the show for Gretchen. I don't great. Think be able to make okay. it. Okay, that's great. And you can also see, uh, and we'll, we'll, we'll still talk about her and, and her art and, uh, and how people can check that out. Um, the amount of work that she's put into uh, at Pepperdine and it's great, very accomplished artist. All right. So it's about 6.04, 6.05. Again, everyone who's joining us, I'm Dustin Kleeman, I'm with Momentum. Yeah, I look sweaty because it is warm in my apartment tonight. You can see the artwork behind me. My wife is an artist. I'm not an artist. So whatever I talk about tonight is probably going to seem like I am peripherally good at art. Uh, but let me assure you, it's, it's all from just uh, being amazed at some of the work that she has put through over the years that uh, we've been married. So um, if I ask you some questions that you're like, this is a strange question, just know that that's the perspective that it's coming from. So I hope you understand. Again, welcome everyone. Thanks for joining us here on this beautiful evening in May, a Thursday in May. I'm Dustin Kleeman with Momentum, formerly UCP of Los Angeles. And we've been looking forward to this new exhibit, uh, Blank Canvas, now in its eighth iteration. Whose dog is barking? Do they want to be on as well? Are they an artist? They'll join us in a second too. Um, everybody, everybody probably knows the Washington Reed Gallery. They're probably familiar with UCPLA. Um, but we want to tell you that that has changed. Just in the last week or so, we have gone through a brand change, a name change that better represents who we are as an organization. Um, we are, are big into providing access, opportunity, and inclusion for all people. And a big part of that is providing that through art uh, in any medium in any different way. Um, what's great about the, the art scene that we have here uh, is just the amount of people who put forth a lot of effort to make sure that that access and inclusion and opportunity is there for people. The team of Momentum Creative, they've worked incredibly hard and thoughtful on this hybrid exhibit. And we have some of the curators here tonight to join and talk to us uh, a little bit about their perspective. Um, but before we go and continue, I'd like to introduce Stephanie Anderson. Uh, and, and you've put so much work into this, Stephanie. Um, talk a little bit about how blank canvas and, and really momentum creative and how it's all come together. Thank you, Dustin. Um, well, first of all, thank you to everybody, all of the artists, the curators and the community partners who are a part of this tonight. Um, blank canvas has definitely been a labor of love and a tradition over 10 years, although we've only had it eight years <laughs> because we had to skip a few with other circumstances. And it is a long running tradition of um, making connections uh, amongst artists. And it's really, it's taken shape and become a much larger platform and opportunity for connection every year. And over the last year, it was no different. Um, the vision and the support um, and involvement of a diverse group 
of curators and artists is um, what we're here to celebrate tonight. Um, really the focus of this um, exhibition has always been about, um, as I said, connection, but also equity and accessibility. So we invite any, any artists or anybody who wants to make art to be able to be a part of it and um, show their work. And um, we've done that not only through connecting with people who already had artwork to show or had their own supplies and tools, but also by providing those uh, to folks who needed them. And so it's been a really exciting way to connect people who are well into their art career, as well as people who just discovered something that they wanted to express. So, um, and it's brought to us so many partners and friends of the gallery and the studio over the years. So um, I thank you all for being a part of it. Um, it's one of the very best parts of my life to be involved with Momentum Creative and with the Washington Reed Gallery and our studio and artists um, all over. I do want to thank you, Aranya Kerr, my partner in crime for all of the hard work and um, all of uh, the co-leadership with our team and with our artists. I also needed to call out Ty Pownall, who um, was one of the original partners <laughs> in crime that um, I've, I was uh, very lucky to be able to work with to help um, build the studio and the galleries with the artists um, over time and to launch the first blank canvas and several after that. So it means so much to have you a part of things tonight, um, to have you and your network. You've introduced us to um, other artists and connected us with Pepperdine and um, it's a better show as a result. Um, I also just wanna thank again, um, Wing Walker Brewery, Design Lab and Supply Frame, Adrian's Place, and Pepperdine, um, who are all housing uh, chapters of our show, installations on the ground, um, in addition to this plenary virtual show that everybody will, will be able to see on the website. So again, um, local and around the world, thank you for participating and for um, helping uh, continue the tradition of Blank Canvas. Thank you, Stephanie. And all great words said too. We're very excited uh, that this is finally here. The, the, a lot of labor of love and time movement, uh, things that kind of had to be pushed down the line a little bit. It's here. Blank Canvas is here and there's so much beautiful art to be seen. Uh, we'll talk about that more in a second. So let's get everybody's appetite going and let's share a little bit about uh, the a little taste of what there is available to people um, when it comes to Blank Canvas 8. Lot of great art to be seen. Um, so excited for this and uh, to talk more about it. Big thank you to Andrew Morris who put that together. Uh, he's done a great job at uh, putting together a video for us and a little bit more of. Um, there, I just stopped my screen. I'm doing all things at once, so it could be a little bit confusing for me a little bit. Uh, but he has helped also with just the design, the logo itself of uh, blank canvas and really bringing that to life as well. Okay, so all that said, let's get to the big 
main event. And that's introducing our curators. Um, I'm going to go down the line and I'll just introduce uh, a little bit about everyone. Uh, Ty Powell, a Pepperdine University, an American artist and curator working here in LA. Born and raised in Southern California, he's received his MFA from Claremont Graduate University in 2008. His work's been shown all over the world. Uh, you can find it from Malibu to Berlin, uh, Stockholm, Johannesburg. Uh, he's an associate professor of studio art at Pepperdine University. Also a member of the art collective, uh, Durden and Ray, a, a curatorial group operating a gallery space in downtown. And Ty, is that, is that space uh, looking to be open hopefully in the coming weeks and months here? Thumbs up. Okay. Okay. That, that's good. All right. Kate Parsons, a professor at Pepperdine University, who is also a video artist. She is a co-founder of Float, a virtual reality, augmented reality art studio, and Fembit, a video art festival creating Los Angeles female artists working or celebrating, I should say, uh, Los Angeles female artists working in video and new media. Kate's work can be found all around the world, as well as in galleries online, in forests, stolen airwaves, and in virtual reality. Uh, Kate, you also are, are, you've visited my home state in Montana and have done a lot of work there. You're also a, a Montana State graduate, am I correct? Oh, I, I totally, look what I did. I cut her video off completely. My mistake, Kate. I, I, let me see if I can find you here. Uh, there we go. This is my first. I, there we go. And she's hopefully coming back to unmute herself and tell us more. Here Come I on. am. <laughs> yeah, I'm actually coming uh, to you from Montana right now, too. Um, oh, I'm great. a Montana native myself. So, uh, but yeah, MSU alum, too. That's great. Well, I'm a yeah. Grizz, so we're oh. naturally not supposed to get along, <laughs> but I think we can put our differences aside for just an hour here. And uh, that, that's great to have a fellow Montanan here um, as well. Zainab Abesh, an artist joining us and a curator who recently graduated from UCLA's Design Media Arts program. She primarily works with archived photography, video, and immersive media. Her subjects revolve around identity, history, and loss of memory, which I find very, very interesting and would love to hear more about. She's deeply influenced by Istanbul's city culture and in pursuit of exploring shifting identities to navigate the struggle and alienation that arise from changing social environments. Zineb, could you tell us a little bit more just about, I'm really interested in that portion of it uh, that you have is the, the loss of memory. Would you be willing to share a little bit about that? Of course. Um, so I've, I've always sort of had this obsession with sort of preserving things that I feel are, um, will no longer exist. And this you know, can go anything from history to identity that's um, sort of lost in our, um, or intentionally sort of faded from our cultural history. Um, so a lot of the work I do revolves around using archive photos and films um, to sort of uh, preserve this, you know, and sort of really explore and understand this interaction we have with like these personal recollections in contrast with like collective forms of memory we have as society. <laughs> I love that. Yeah, that's great. Um, also, and Ty, you'll fill, help fill in the gaps here too, of Gretchen, Gretchen Bachelor, also a, a, a Pepperdine University uh, assistant professor of fine art. Her education spans from the University of Washington to the Academy of Fine Arts in Dresden, Germany. Uh, Gretchen's work can be found in both public and private collections in the United States and abroad. She's also participated in national and international exhibitions, including shows in Seattle, Philadelphia, Austria, and Istanbul as well. Uh, Ty, if you could, uh, she's a very accomplished artist and also incredibly wealthy with the knowledge of, of, of art itself. Could you talk a little about uh, your knowledge with her and, and, and more? Yeah, 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 absolutely. Um, yeah, Gretchen's a great friend of mine. Uh, we've been working together. We started at Pepperdine at the same time, so... Uh, we've had a, a chance to sort of um, cultivate a, sort of a, a program there together, and that's been a lot of fun. So it was fun to come together on this project as well uh, and look at some artists that we knew and some artists that were new to us. And I'm sorry that she couldn't be here tonight, but I will. I'll, I'll fill in the blanks for Blank Canvas. That's great. That's great. And of course, not last for the reason why we're keeping her last is because she's the special woman of the hour, Jonah Wilkins. She is an artist who is also celebrating her birthday today. 
uh, an artist from Encino whose talents span many mediums with focus on the disciplines of painting and photography with work that is autobiographical. Her art espouses her concepts of beauty, hope, and freedom. Uh, her vivid images of flowers, rainbows, and lush landscapes convey the hope and spirit that she brings to everyone she meets. Her love and respect for folklore also inspires her to celebrate the potential found in the world and to act in gratitude. Jonah, thank you so much for joining us. Happy birthday to you. Um, talk a little bit about your excitement for Blank Canvas uh, finally opening up. Thank you very much. Um, I appreciate it. Um, I was so excited to work with Aranya and set up the um, art at the Washington Reed Gallery. Um, and it's it was so neat to do that. I've curated a couple other shows, um, but this is the first time that I've curated a blank canvas. And I was happy to do that. Well, just looking and, through it, and I know yeah. people will really get to enjoy that because your eye for things has been really fantastic. I just cut you off, so continue, please. I apologize. No, no, I, I just, I just like the concept of blank canvas of everybody kind of donating their work to benefit the program, and it's been so good. That's great. Well, thank you again and happy birthday. I'm glad you're thank celebrating. You. You're choosing to celebrate with us tonight and talk more about it. So uh, let me ask some questions to everyone. And uh, Kate, I'll start with you because you started drinking right away. And so uh, <laughs> when we're talking about um, the community of art exhibitions in 2021, um, what has changed for artists and, and what are those new challenges that are, are happening right now and that you'll foresee in post-pandemic world? There we go. All right. Um, yeah, no, that's a great question. Um, so for a lot of the, the mediums that I tend to work in, like a lot of them are sort of digitally native. So we were sort of in some ways, um, I guess, uniquely attuned to kind of going online when the pandemic happened. Um, but we still had to be really creative as far as how we were going to show work and like share it with other people. Um, and so a lot of that, you know, a lot of us went online and did uh, Twitch streams. Um, things like that and showed work that way. Um, but uh, I've just noticed that there's, artists are just getting more creative with how they wanna show their work. Like there's a lot, there's art that's shown like in storefronts now, like much more so than before. Um, and I guess one silver lining, at least for me, is it's been a little bit, you know, it's normalized now to connect with artists and share work online that we might not or ordinarily see. And so like this sort of, um, you know, uh, you know, viewing work like we are with uh, blank canvas and um, and everything, kind of this hybrid model, uh, is really exciting to me because we're both kind of staying local but also going global as well. So I Zinep, look forward to more of that. Zinep, I wanted to ask you just about your process too, because you do use uh, archive photography and video as well as immersive media, and you're you're also kind of really starting to. Um, take more steps into that art world post-graduation mm -hmm. and forward. So for you, how do you foresee it into what you expected art to look like and be in that world? And then now how it has to kind of change or you, maybe you need to adapt or it adapts to you. I, I know that that can kind of go both ways. Yeah, of course. I think it's, it's really interesting how, um, a lot of online shows started to obviously be on these virtual platforms, um, whether it be, you know, you create your own avatar or you're in this social area with a bunch of other people in a gallery opening that's on web or, um, you know, they've been, there've been tons of custom made VR experiences for this too. But before the pandemic, it was sort of, it was, it took a lot more convincing, I think, for people to accept and want to be a part of these, you know, virtual exhibitions or shows. But once the pandemic hit, I think people kind of realized that this is something that's totally doable and it doesn't feel as awkward as you might think to um, meet and talk to avatars in like a virtual gallery. Um, and so I'm seeing this sort of acceptance into this world and I'm hoping that we have more of it because there's such a great potential of having a global audience um, once you sort of get past the idea of like a virtual exhibition. Um, which makes me happy that we're seeing tons of even film festivals doing this and showing work online. It's just, it's the sort of accessibility of being able to see these things um, with a global audience, I think is kind of amazing. 
Um, and it, it just makes me happy. Ty, for you, could, I would love to go back and talk a little bit about that collective uh, that is in downtown LA and kind of how that has shifted for you. And um, it's twofold of my question from your perspective, being a professor and, and trying to get across these um, ideas and, and methods, but then also having your own, the own space that um, you're part of and, and managing that. So uh, talk a little bit about what you've seen so far in that time and, and what post will look like. When does post art, pan, post pandemic art look like? Um, and when does it happen? Talk a little bit more about that. There I am. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Good, good questions. What, what comes next is, uh, that'll be exciting to see. Um, you know, I'm, I'm hoping that, uh, some of these trends can, can maintain while we also go back in person. I think, you know, we've learned a lot of creative ways to be together in community as artists and curators. Uh, and I, I hope that, you know, having some of these digital veins will, um, will sort of give us more avenues to connect the, so I, I primarily teach sculpture, uh, to a bunch of people in little zoom squares who are sitting in their apartments. Uh, so that's been, that's been something that's been challenging, uh, to teach people how to work with wood and plaster, uh, through zoom. Um, so I'm excited for that to end. Uh, and as far as Durden and Ray, the art collective, the curatorial collective that I'm a part of, uh, we are getting back to some in-person uh, shows actually in our, in our gallery space. Uh, but we have been open. Um, we have had some stuff in person and there has been some really creative in-person uh, exhibitions uh, that have taken place um, like High Beams, which is in parking lots. Uh, and there is you know, sculpture to see. There is uh, a lot of artwork installations to, to walk around and, and see. So there's, there's been a lot of creativity that's gone into that. That's great. Uh, Jonah, I wanted to ask you uh, this next question. I want you to start. Um, as you view art and how you have your approach to art, how important is it for um, other people who are viewing it to understand your process? I know when we do virtual events, um, it's kind of difficult for people to see that process and, and maybe even fellow artists as well to see the process of how you create at home. Um, how much is that an important piece to the art that you create? Um, I would answer that question. Thank you very much for asking. Um, I, I think it's important to understand my process, but if I'm not physically with them and they're just viewing my art, I just leave it up to their interpretation. And I, um, I get a kick out of hearing what other people's interpretation is of the artwork, but I do have my own perspective and my own um, meaning um, to my art. <laughs> I hope I'm answering that correctly. <laughs> no, you are. And I don't think there's a wrong way to answer it. Um, but maybe another part of that question too would be, you know, being at what, what was Washington Reed Gallery um, and being in person to see people view your art when they would open something like blank canvas, you don't really get to see people take it in. Now, you know, there's not the, this, this opening, yeah. we're opening it, uh, ver, you know, in this hybrid model where we have installations that people can walk through, you know, at the brewery, they can go get a drink and, and take a look at the art, but there's not this singular event that we haven't had since March of 2020, uh, to be able to do to, to have people react in real time and you get to see that reaction. So for you, uh, do you, how much do you miss that? Just being able to, to, to see those people, uh, people have a different reaction or um, come up with a different interpretation of your art. I, I, I think it's very important to physically be there and to see people's reaction. And I miss that so much. I love, I like the online technology part of the, this whole, this whole, pandemic experience, but I miss the physical contact of being with people and seeing their reaction 
in live mode. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I think we all miss that so much. And uh, the fact that we are inching closer to that day where we can go back in, I know that we're still keeping that distance and space between everyone, but also at the same time, um, finally getting to, to be face to face to something. My wife and I just recently went to the Getty Villa that re reopened and, uh, mm. to, to actually be in an art space again, and to see these, these, uh, pieces of history in person is something that you go, man, I miss this. This was something that you, you kind of realize how much you actually, and I hope that that's the case. Maybe Kate, you can answer this too, of, of people appreciating art in a physical space more. I know that you do a lot of augmented reality, uh, virtual reality stuff, uh, but for people to be there too, even in, in any sort of sense, how much that, that makes a, a difference for a lot of people. Yeah, I think it really does. And I think as artists, we've also kind of, you know, there's pluses and minuses to both. But like, I know as, as artists, like a lot of us have really missed being able to share our, you know, larger or more tangible work um, with the public. And because a lot of it was really kind of inaccessible otherwise, you know, like a VR, AR piece, like sometimes doesn't translate the way you want it to um, over Zoom, like it might uh, in an actual physical space. Ty, for you, I know that you've been teaching a lot of hands-on stuff. So <laughs> that also shows up when you're seeing online stuff. I know in this, in this exhibit, we do have pieces that are photos of actual pieces. Um, yeah, Stephanie has one of birds that it's 2D when you see it, uh, but it, you know for a fact that it's a 3D a piece that she wants to share. So how, how is that? I know for one, it's been difficult to teach but also to, to have maybe students or artists um, feel like they're, how do you get that across for people to enjoy something that is a physical piece of art? Yeah, I mean, you do your best, I think. Um, you know, you put it out there and you, uh, you get the best, the best images you can and you give them some installation shots and uh, you hope that uh, we'll be back in person pretty soon. I think, you know, when you're looking at a painting or you're looking at a sculpture, there's only so much you can do. So, you know, I'm, I'm very excited to be back in person uh, and have actual objects in front of me in a gallery. Um, I think even more than that, I'm excited to just be in a room with other people who are looking at the same thing that I'm looking at, uh, because that more than anything, I think is is what I miss. I miss being uh, just around other people who are sort of observing the same thing in real time. Um, but I think for this show, I think it is so exciting to be able to share with a broader audience. Uh, I mean, anyone can, can tune into this and see, which is, which is, you know, that's exciting. Yeah. So let's, let's share a little bit of it. We do want to, um, the new redesigned website of Momentum Creative, formerly Washington Reed Gallery. That's my that's my news read for you. Uh, it's super easy to get to. Uh, hopefully everybody at home can see this okay. Blank canvas you can get to. It's a, a beautiful website showing the gallery space itself. Uh, you can get to all the exhibitions. You can even take a look at past exhibitions too that are up there. We have artist spotlights. Uh, you can see all the curators and their bios as well on our website, um, just an easy click. You can also support artists uh, by purchasing artwork that is available through Shopify. So let's just go to the blank canvas and uh, take a look here at the artwork and catalog. Um, and as I go, one of the questions, and Zanep, I'll go with you on this one. Um, what are the highlights for you of, of the exhibition in your experience? And could you share a few words of why this one has been uh, meaningful for you? Sure. Um... I think it was quite interesting to work on any kind of curatorial project um, at, at seeing artists create all these extraordinary, extra, extra <laughs> but then there's a lot you sort of have to feed off of interaction or some sort of visual stimulus from um, the outside world. And I think that sort of absence of physical like human connection a lot of artists have to turn inwards for inspiration um and you know that could mean anything from us seeing work that's sort of you know dipping into the back catalogs of memories or 
you know, even creating new sort of entirely imagined worlds and landscapes. Um, I generally think it's just been so incredible to be able to see this sort of creative response that people have had um, during this time. Uh, and it also definitely feels like there's this sort of heightened appreciation for everything that's out there now. Um, and in contrast, there's also, I feel a lot of the work reflects this period of self reflection to try to really understand the kind of world that we're we, we want to live in and we live in right now. Um, so it's just, it's been very special because also to see some of the works that have been made before the pandemic that have been revisited um, and just looking at it from a different perspective. So it's definitely been an incredible pleasure to be able to curate some of these works with Kate. Um, yeah, yeah, I've, I've really enjoyed this time. Yeah, Kate, and, and if you want to add anything further to that, um, just kind of about the same question. Oh, maybe, maybe here, got to unmute. I, I wish I, I made that a little there bit easier on myself. <laughs> I didn't, but hey, that's okay. We'll, we'll get back to the, to the art here. Yeah, no worries. Um, yeah, I mean, I second everything that, that uh, Zainab said. Um, I think for our curatorial, like our, our sort of um, show, it was sort of interesting because we sort of started off thinking about uh, the body in relationship to nature and sort of, you know, working intuitively, trying to figure out what works were going to um, uh, be included. And we just, we ended up just really having a good time. Um, you know, finding works that were already made, stuff that had, had just been made. Like we got one video that came in, like, I think the render probably finished like just a couple days ago. Um, and everything, we were just really happy with how everything turned out. And it was just so much fun to see all this new work from artists that we, you know, weren't familiar with before. And then, you know, some who, uh, who we do know. Jenna, could you tell me what you've thought so far of, of this too, the highlights of the exhibition in your experience? Uh, I know that you're very familiar with past uh, um, exhibits that, that we've done virtually too, but maybe some of the highlights that you've seen. Is that a question for me? Yes. Oh, okay. Well, uh, the highlight for me has been kind of... Um, really trying to motivate myself to do art from a home situation where um, I where I'm not able to uh, interact with anybody else who's doing art and I find that very interesting to do myself and I really appreciated looking at the other people's art that I was able to put up at Washington Ray Gallery that was really interesting for me to see. Yeah, so far we have 213 pieces in this gallery right now. I almost feel mm -hmm. that I'm doing an injustice of it right now, looking at it from my perspective on a laptop here. Uh, mm -hmm. It needs to be on one of those large 88 inch TVs uh, to display for, for the entire, for you just to sit back on a couch and, and have a play through slideshow mode and really just kind of, let let it wash over you. Um, it is one of those things that once you go around, and I have a couple times that you start to pick out different things, which is great. It's you can sit down, you can be seated, you don't have to walk anywhere, and that's great that you can uh, enjoy from from the space that is comfort to you uh, on on all these images. Um, we are getting closer to the end, and we want to be respectful of everyone's time. And I'll have Stephanie say a few words in a moment here, but we'll go around one more time. And I, ju I just want to ask for advice of fellow artists. You know, what would you? I guess the the great thing about having you brilliant minds here is to to also provide a chance to give a little insight for people as well. And uh, Ty, we'll start with you. Uh, we'll go the professor route, and if you could provide some sage advice for maybe aspiring artists, for people also at the same time who you know it's getting toward the end of the end of the pandemic. Uh, put that in quotes and and knock on wood. But uh, maybe for people who realize that after a year they they wanted to do art and they just maybe didn't find the time, but hey, there's always a chance they can always start. And what would you, what would you say for, for people? Oh man, I think, um, yeah, I mean, I, I guess thanks for, for asking that for people. I think 
the big, you know, I, I think the, one of the biggest hurdles is, uh, I don't know, I guess it's just starting. Right. I, I think, I think you gotta, I don't know, you gotta push everything to the side and, and just, um, get your hands dirty. And I think once you start getting your hands dirty and you start playing with a material, any material, and you start thinking about, you know, less about what people are going to think and more about what's, what's running through your hands, that electricity, and you just start moving material around, uh, you get into the flow quicker than you might think. I think the other thing I would say is to get involved with stuff like blank canvas. I mean, this is a, it's an exciting opportunity to be part of a community this large, um, to be able to show with so many different artists that are doing so many different things in different places. Uh, and that's a great way to sort of keep your flow going, you know, so much of what we do as artists happens in, in solitude in our, in our spaces, wherever we're making art. And that has to be coupled with community at some point. And those two things together keep you going as artists. Kate, the same question for you. And I, I know you have a great perspective too on, on the type of art that you do and, and being able to create. Sure. Yeah. Um, again, like kind of seconding everything that, that Ty said too, uh, community is really important no matter what type of work you're making, like whatever medium it is, um, which is again, like, yeah, what, um, this is so, it's so great to be a part of this. Um, and, you know, the Fembit and some of the other um, uh, groups that both Zainab and I are, are part of um, really kind of help nourish a practice. And it's people that can help like hold you accountable too. Uh, once you start making, um, I guess the only other like practical advice I would give too is, you know, sometimes the variety of materials available for people to actually make work with can be um, a little bit intimidating or it's just, it's a lot, right? And sometimes you just have to try things until they feel good. And, you know, just not let kind of, again, to Ty's point, just you kind of have to do the work of setting aside, setting aside the time um, to, you know, work with each material until something that feels right, like kind of starts to click. Jonah, how about yourself? What would you give advice? How, what advice would you provide? Um, I think my, the advice would be, my advice would be to um, really steer away from um, kind of letting your mind be too bogged down with how many different um, medium materials there are out there and to be patient with yourself. Um, try to think of one specific thing you want to do at a time, whether it's working with paint, working with um, stitchery, like I, I've um, started to do myself. And um, yeah, that's what I would kind of give um, advice, like to be patient with yourself. And I know it's oh, it can be overwhelming with all the different media there is out there, uh, all the art and media. But I would also say to experiment with a lot of different kinds of media and see which one fits for you, see which one you kind of connect with. Yeah, and, and I do want to ask Zinep how you connected with the mediums that you work with um, and, and how that really blossomed through. Did you go through a number of different ones? How did, how did that start? Or was it just you've, you started with it and found it? Um, I, I basically, oh, was that for me? I'm I'm sorry, that was, we can, we can get back to you, but that was, that was for Zinep, yeah, just about uh, oh, her. Sorry. My apologies. <laughs> um, yeah, I think... Um, it's interesting because right when the pandemic hit is when um, I was just starting my thesis work for finishing up my MFA and it was really interesting to see how all the artists in my cohort were able to, um, who, you know, some of them are sculptors, some of them create, a lot of them create physical works and we all have to adapt to creating something that would live in a virtual show. So it's really interesting, I think, for artists to just be open for that change, to be able to adapt to, you know, whatever the circumstances are that the world gives you. Um, and, you know, it's sometimes the best art sort of comes from those kinds of moments of um, confusion and mistakes. And it's just trying to have an open heart to it in a sense. And the other thing I want to mention is um, what Kate and Ty said, I think community was everything for the artist um, 
for artists during this time because even um, you know losing studio time as a student is a huge deal because you don't get that commentary from your friends and teachers physically. But um, one thing that I did, I that I give this advice to everyone is we started once month um, monthly meeting studio times with some of my friends where we do hold ourselves accountable to be able to show some new work to each other, and it's really helped with you know just continuing to work and feeling motivated to share um, with people. That's great. That's wonderful advice. And I really appreciate everyone's perspective. Jonah, back to you. I, I, I know that I was for her, but let's, let's, let me ask you, I mean, just for your, uh, you said that you were starting to do some stitching work. Is that, that's a recent thing, correct? Yes. I, I just started, I connected with a friend of mine in the program and she has shown me what she has done. And I kind of took inspiration from that. Yeah. And I enjoyed doing that. And I enjoyed, I started, I started off with um, doing the painting thing. And I really enjoy that. I come from an artist background. Um, so that it inspires me and kind of looking around, looking at the beauty around me and stuff. And I really enjoy that too. That's great. Well, thank you again for everyone here. Stephanie, before we go, I do want to give the floor to Stephanie and talk a little bit about uh, all the additional curators too and and uh, have a few words. And I'll go through and add, uh, we'll share some pictures as as you talk, Stephanie. Oh, you're muted. Oh, oh, there you go. Are we good? All yep, right. you're good. Um, first of all, to our esteemed colleagues, this panel, um, thank you again for all of the collaboration over these many months and for your time tonight. Um, we certainly want to also call out and highlight uh, the additional curators that we've been working with. Um, it was a large panel of curators and many, many installations and chapters of this storytelling show. And um, in early June, we will um, have a second panel and uh, discussion with those curators as well. So we'll see Raven and JC and Laura and Adrian and Magenta. Um, we will be sending out information on that soon and we look forward to having you join us again. Um, I can't say enough again about this group of people and the celebration of community. That really is everything that Blank Canvas is about. Um, and the studio and galleries um, of Momentum Creative and UCPLA over the years are all about community. Artists coming together, sharing their work, sharing their visions, and driving services forward. And um, I thank you for all being a part of that. Um, I thank people around the world for contributing. And as Zainab was saying, I think the pandemic has pushed us to think beyond what we knew about sharing artwork and making artwork. Um, Aranya and I have been thrilled to be able to support uh, people to be making more artwork at home and to just ensure that people are making work wherever they are. Um, Aranya, would you like to share a few words? I'm sorry, I threw dust in a curveball there. I'm known for doing things like that. Yeah, sure. Uh, I would just like to say, you know, thank you everyone. And I, I, it's been like a pleasure and a joy to like put the show together and just the way we had to kind of think about art and the way we are going to showcase artwork. I think it's like we have have kind of I feel revolutionized, like kind of how we're going to see art in the next stage. So thank you everyone and for contributing the artwork. And also thank you to everybody who tuned in and also to the artists that gave us, you know, their time, energy and effort and their creativity. So thank you, everyone. Thank you very much, everyone. Momentumcreative.org, you can check it out there. Uh, and you can also support the artists by purchasing artwork that is available through the Shopify uh, website. Um, and just, just sit down. 
relax a little bit, enjoy. If you're, you know, <laughs> winding down for your Thursday night and you want to have some wine, this is a perfect way to do so. Uh, spark up some conversation with your loved one, call up a friend on zoom, uh, enjoy this artwork because it is about connection and there's a way to connect with people regardless of where we are located right now. The wonderful thing of being in 2021 is we can connect right here, uh, over zoom or over teams or even through iPhones. So, um, Thank you for everyone joining us tonight. We will be back in a few weeks, uh, hopefully a little bit more tuned up on my end. Trust me. I apologize if you, thanks for putting up with me. I do appreciate it. Everyone enjoy your evening and we'll see you all soon. Bye.